Hi guys, so I'm creating this video to show you how to do some kind of uh, concept um, animation in ZBrush. So the idea is that basically sometimes you will have a client that will ask you, can you show me the model with animation? Or for example, when you need to open the mouth of a creature or you need to um, have a flower like I will be doing here, have a flower that will spread its, um, its leaves. So how can we do that in ZBrush? So the idea is to play with the timeline in ZBrush so you can have some kind of concept animation and then you can record this concept animation and send that to your client as a proof of concept again. It's not to make something that would be perfect. It's more about having the idea of how the the leaves the leaves of this, this flower will spread. So how can we do that? How can we play with the timeline in ZBrush in order to create that? So I just created this really quick scene in order to show you how we will be able to do that, how we'll be able to play with the, with the different ZBrush features. So the idea first is to, so I have all the models that has been separated into different pieces. And so I have different layers of, of leaves. And I will just do the process on just the, um, let's say, the internal leaves or maybe just the in external. Yeah, let's play with the external leaves. So I will show you how to do that with the external leaves because I already did it on the internal. And so I will just pick the current sub tool because I want to work on this one. And then I will go in layers. And as you can see here, I have different layers. And the opacity of the different layers are um, different. And the reason is because the different layers are playing, are activating with the timeline. And I want them to activate at different times. So as, as we can see here, what I have is that at the beginning, I have the open layer, which is basically just the current state of the model, um, state, initial state of the model. Nothing has been sculpted on this one. But the mid layer, is um, activated at 100% at this frame. And the mid layer is basically the mid step of the opening of the different uh, leaves. Um, so, and then I will have this one that will be open and visible at 100%. And then at the final stage of the closed flower, what I will have is that I will have the closed layer that will be open and visible at 100%. So let's go back in time and let's resculpt everything that has been done on this uh, really rough model. But again, it's just a way for me to show you how we can do that in ZBrush. So I will kill these two different layers. And the idea is to have a uh, first to store the current state of your model. So you can make sure that you will not break this one. So current state is just the open version. If I'm playing now the um, with the timeline, I can see that the two sub tools are still playing, but the, the last one isn't. So I will go to the last frame because this one is when the flower should be completely closed and I will add a new layer. I will rename this layer into close and then I will kill the perspective for now because I just want to scale the difference, the, the latest uh, state. Go back in lower subdivision, pick with my selection tool, and I have the radial symmetry that is activated here. So I will pick the internal. I will um, log the internal part of uh, this layer of leaves, blur it again, blur it again. Then I will play with my rotate tool. So we just dock it like this. OK. Now let's create the last, um, the close version with some sculpting. So I will move them like this, move them slightly with the translate tool. Something like that. It's fine if it's not perfect because it's just a way for me to show you how it's working. And then I will just move out the broken pieces of this flower and with my, my move, um, Move topological, what I want to do is just to create the final sh shape of my uh, flower. So I want to create something like that. Make sure that 
it's closed the way I want it to be closed. Then I will kill the symmetry and move the individual pieces of this object one by one so I can create the final stage. And again, I want to create the, um, the visuals that I want. Something like that, something like that. Okay, move it slightly out, smooth it. Whoops. Keep sculpting the adjustment. And then once I'm happy with the final shape, what I will do now is to go back on the highest level of the division of my model. So again, nothing is perfect, but it's not, um, it's not a problem. I just want to show you how the tool is working and how you can do the concept animation and animate it later. Something like that will be better. And then I will just extract this. Okay, so now that I have the new stage, um, the close stage, what I want to do is to create a mid stage. So the problem with the animation layer is that everything is going to be linear. So the translation from the open to close will be linear, which means that in the mid stage of my animation, what I will get is I will get something that will get really flattened. Um, the leaves are coming from this position, then going to this, sorry, this close position. And the transition between the two stages is really linear. So in the middle, what I will get is something that will get really linear as well. So I will get some kind of really flattened leaf. And that's not something that I want. I want to have something that will be a little bit more, um, having a little bit more of a curve with the animation. I want to get something that will create a motion like that. Like that. So what I have to do is that I have to sculpt another animation layer in between so I can get to the different stages of animation. And sometimes something that you will have to do as well, if you want to get something that is even cleaner, is to sculpt intermediate shapes. Because really what we are doing at this point is to create some blend shapes. So you will want to create these blend shapes so you can get um, even more definition within your concept animation, your concept sculpt animation, and this one at the beginning. But it's really up to you how many layers you want to you want to do. For this example here, what we will do is just two um, different layers apart from the the initial state. So I will go back to the close version, store. So delete morph target and store morph target with this stage. Then I will hide this close version and I will create a new version. So as I told you, I want to create now the mid version, the mid um, animation version for my flower. So we just pick with my selection tool, uh, my selection brush, sorry the area of the flower that I want to move, to rotate. <coughs> then I will move it like so. Move it slightly upward. And then use my sculpting brush to adjust the shape. Okay, so I want to create something like that. Maybe open up slightly outward to create some kind of um, some kind of gravity effect on the external part of the leaves. Smooth it, go in the higher subdivision level and adjust everything in the individually to create the mid animation uh, stage for my flower. Okay, so I have now the different stages of my flower. So what I want to do, so this one is the mid one. So I will rename it into mid, put it back on top of the closed version, reveal it again to make sure that this guy is visible. And then I will activate the visibility of the closed version. So as you can see here, the problem we have is that we have this one that has been added in, in on top of the mid version. So I want to put the 
close version uh, in recording mode again. And then, because I just stored a morph target before I started to, to scull the mid version, I will um, pick this close uh, layer and switch it back to the version I had before. So if you are looking for the morph target, what you, uh, you, you can find it quickly into the tool palette and into the morph target um, function. So yeah, just play with as different options, store, switch, and delete the morph target if you don't need it um, anymore. So now we have our three different layers that has been sculpted. So what we want to do with that is to animate them or to make them visible in regard to the uh, timeline. So if you don't know where the timeline in is, you just need to go into movie and here into movie, you will go into timeline and you will show your timeline. So when the timeline has been showed, what I want to do is to play with the different opacity. So I will just put the close opacity at zero at the beginning and then the mid opacity at zero as well. So once I'm clicking on the opacity of this layer, what is happening is that now it's, um, I can see that the number has been selected, the opacity has been selected, meaning that everything that, um, every time when I will click on my timeline, it will have an effect on the current activated um, function in ZBrush. So here the current activated function is the mid opacity at zero. So I will put a mid opacity a point for the mid opacity at zero here on my timeline. I can see next on the left of my timeline that the layer zero one that is named mid has now an animation um, key that has been put on the timeline. So what I want to do now is to put the opacity at 100% and I will put the opacity on this point of my timeline. Then I will do the same. I will select my close layer, put it back at zero to make sure that the opacity is not selected. And then I will add a point exactly where I added the, the uh, former one. And again, I can see on the left of my timeline that I have a layer zero two close key point that has been placed on this timeline. Now I want to place the latest point for the animation to play. So we put that at 100% make sure that the close opacity is at 100% here and still selected and add the final point to my timeline. And now it should be playing fine. So if I play with the timeline opacity like this, uh, sorry, we, if I just scroll uh, this, um, this line on my timeline, then I can see that I now have a blocking of my animation that is playing and that the opacity of my different layers is activating or unactivating as expecting. So one last thing to know when you have a lot of layers or um, if for example, you are starting to move into your viewport and then you're clicking in your view viewport and you add a new point into your timeline, then the point that will be stored here is in relation to the camera. So this means that if I'm trying to turn my camera um, in another direction and then I will play with my timeline, then every time I do that, every time I want to, for example, I want to record something that will be far from my object and then I will scroll my timeline. Then I will go back to where the point of the camera has been stored. So I simply need to click on this point and drag and drop it into the viewport. So the point stored for the camera will go away and will not be activated anymore. And now I can move my camera freely into my viewport and play the animation and um, do um, a screencast as I'm doing now and send that to my client as a proof of concept for the animation. So one last thing that you want to do. So the animation for the different layers is stored within the ZBrush tool and is stored within the ZBrush project. So if, for example, I'm saving this as a Z tool and I call that flower, so this will be like um, flower Z tool. Then the next time I will open my ZTL file, the animation will still be here. But what 
may not be visible is the timeline. So what you want to do again is just go in movie and make sure that if you show your timeline, you have points on the current selection. So if I'm picking this layer now, I can see that I have points that are activated on, on this layer. So every time the keyframes, the key points um, for the animation will be stored with your Z tool. You do not have to worry about that. You just want to make sure that you are um, also sculpting on something that is currently activated. Like for now, if I wanted to adjust the um, close pose, then I will have to make sure that I activate this layer again, then change something on my layer. Something like that. Or move the leaves slightly. And then um, I can still play with my keyframes because the keyframes has been stored, but what has been changed is just the current shape of the closed layer that I have in my, in my viewport. So I hope that uh, it's helping you to understand how to do some kind of a quick um, animation within ZBrush. And again, something that can be super useful for you to use for concept animation to uh, as a proof of concept for your for your client or something that I use every time when I need, when I need to do um, open mouth or close mouth on one of my creatures. One last thing that I wanted to say is also if your layers are starting to be so if you are trying to play with the animation on your current sub tool and you can see that everything is starting to be really slow because you have a lot of polygons. A simple trick to play again that is just to select or to create like another sub tool on top of everything. So I can create like, for example, V star, put it here, make it really small so I don't see it anymore. And then I can play the animation with no um, freeze or with a, a way better uh, playback, uh, playback speed because I, I have another sub tool that has been selected. So this is it for this video. I hope that you find it useful and uh, good, good luck with your concept uh, animation.